Hey everybody, welcome back. It's my vlog. We're going to be talking today with Red Matt about the state of the Chicago outfit, the current state of the Chicago outfit. Welcome back, guys. My vlog. <music> Mr. We Matt, it is April 12th, 2023, and we're live to talk about the current state of the Chicago outfit. And uh, well, the current events that have been going on with the Chicago outfit, because how could we do a broadcast about something that doesn't exist anymore? Oh, let's talk about the current state of the Chicago outfit. There isn't an outfit, right? Not that I see. Not like it used to be. But it's there, nothing like it used to. Be. There's current news. It's, right. There is current news, but there is no real organization left like we talk about it you just know, doesn't happen i get asked that a lot on the mob tour is there still a chicago outfit is it still exists there's still a mob in vegas Come well on. it's a good part of history it's a very good part of history it's interesting how it worked it's interesting how a group of guys from another country came to this country started muscling their own then started muscling others and basically created organized crime that the government then took away from them. So it's, it's, it really is. They unified. They unified. And instead of picking on each other, they finally unified. Uh -huh. The outfit did. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. It was a, it was a big, it was a war over territory. Prohibition, oh, yeah. the gambling, the, you know, all of it. And it's eh, diluted itself, but it really went into the politics but there have been some recent incidents of members of the chicago outfit that were uh, uh recently passed away made the news uh jimmy oh, yeah. you know was one that wasn't too long ago that was just a couple of months ago I think it was, yeah it's this year all of it's this year that i know yeah. about, I think. tell us about jimmy i and dino i really didn't know that much about jimmy i and dino because uh he was in prison a lot he was in prison a lot but you know Quite a, quite a bit of time when I was around. But he was part of the Cicero crew. And uh, as most of the stronger leaders were part of Cicero crew, um, he was uh, involved in uh, stolen uh, trucking, different things, and uh, he went to prison for that. He kind of dropped up, dropped off the, uh, the radar, so to speak. And then he was arrested with uh, Betty Maltese, something that had to do with I don't know, trucks out in Cicero out there. Mm -hmm. So um, it um, actually, I think they were owned by Cicero, the town of Cicero, or had something to do with the leasing. It was a scam of some kind. Um, I really don't know. I didn't follow that trial that close to find out if he was convicted or what happened to him. But I know Betty Maltese was. Okay. So um, a couple and of then we got. Uh, Van Pasterman, the government took over the gambling and they allowed the credit cards, et cetera, to run amok. It's true. They did. Oh, yeah. Back in the day before credit cards, Red, what did you have? Cash. <laughs> yeah. And if you needed that cash and you didn't have it and you lived in Chicago, there was Vinny down the street that you could go say, hey, can I get some money? And he'd say, oh, yeah. here you go. But you got to pay me back. And if you don't, I'm going to come fucking break your legs. 10% a week. <laughs> and the government said, what a fucking racket. Why not? And so they wrote laws and let the credit card companies go, oh, hey, 26% interest. Sure. <laughs> That's legal. Are you out of your minds? There are some credit cards that I've seen. I don't have any like it. But they're up to 36, 37. Oh, my God. Are you serious? And you know yeah. that you you know and you know who do you know it's like the penny slot machines in Calumet City, okay? They, the government runs them though, okay? Nowadays, back in the day, you had well you <laughs> installing machines and bars and going, you know, it would take a little cut of the money and all that, right? That's what went on. The government said, Well, well let's get our hands in on that action. Why not? You we know? used to cut 50-50. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All right, Big Mo, 
wants to talk about Nick Calabrese. That's recent news. Nick Calabrese passed away. Yes. Yes, that I, was news. I, I interviewed uh, 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 Frank Calabrese Jr. on the show. Nick was his uncle. Un uncle. Man. Yeah, it was a surprise to me that he went that fast. And we didn't know about anything about it ahead of time. It's like George Carlin said, every time somebody dies, I just talked to him the other day. He was just <laughs> <laughs> true. It's true. It really is. Oh, JW man. made a comment here. JW made a comment here, Adam. Yeah. He says, uh, remember the layaway plans? If you couldn't afford it, you put it on layaway. I, I never even heard. You know what? I haven't heard layaway in so long. That was when I was a kid. I remember it, they made fun of people. It was, you know, you made fun of people about, about that. Oh, your mama put that on layaway, you know. Couldn't afford it. So you put it on yeah. layaway. You put it on layaway. Make, make, make payment. Well, stores do still do that. You could do that on Amazon. Oh, you want to buy this $600 vacuum cleaner? You can make us four payments. That, you know, they do. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, layaway. Sonny Zaro remembers it too. Sonny. Yeah, the way okay. layaway used to work, though, they didn't have a set amount. You could put any amount. If you bought something that was 160 bucks or something like that, you could put $20 in, $30 in, but you yeah. couldn't get it until you paid for the whole thing. And there was no interest. Um, because if you stopped paying on it after a year, they took it, they took it back. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Michael Cran. Collateral is right here. The word VIG is a New York term for interest on the loan. In Chicago, the juice money was on the loan, the interest on the loan. We called it juice in Chicago. Everybody in New York calls it the VIG. I heard it growing up both ways. I heard you got to pay on the VIG, and I heard you got to pay on the juice. So I heard it both I ways. I heard juice. I heard juice. You heard juice. Only juice, huh? Juice well, money. we used to call the guys juice loan men. You know, you go and see the juice man. Go and see the juice man. man. Oh, the juice man. My God. Uh, uh, Mr. Hoffman, FD, Adam, I thought of you as I was taking a funeral procession to Holy Cross, a scenic drive through Dixmore, Harvey, and Dalton. Burned out houses and sister gates everywhere. My God. Holy Cross. Holy shit. It's all changed. <laughs> Um, what I'm surprised about is that he never came out and tried to cash in on the history he made by being the first made guy from the outfit to turn and testify. I'm not. He was, uh, from what I understand, he was very ashamed of it. He was ashamed of his life. Talking he about Calvary. Yeah, he looked back at his life and he said, I wasted my life. Like Kirk Calabrese. Kirk Calabrese is like that. He says, I look back at my life, and he said, I just wasted it. I got brought into it by my father. I listened to one of his interviews, and I thought it was great. Now he's working with young people trying to make sure they don't get involved in street gangs or anything like that. Sure. Thank is you, Ryan. Hey, Ryan Brown. My God, Red. I was telling Red last night, I got to, I got to mail that gun to Ryan. Ryan, I'm an asshole. I got to mail you your gun. You won a gun on the show last year, and I still haven't mailed it. I'm an asshole. I really am. I haven't. I keep putting it off, putting it off. When we get off air, I got to mail it to him. Ryan, he's, Ryan, he's told me, he's told me about it a hundred times. <laughs> I, I'm the biggest procrastinator. When it, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to mail actually like some extra stuff to Ryan. I really am put a whole care package together of shit. But here's everything. I think I'm going to like, Ryan, do you already have one of Red's books? If you don't, you got to have one of Red's books. Everybody should have one of Red's books. Um, I believe Ryan has one. <laughs> he wrote a beautiful review for me on Amazon. For those of you that are just tuning in, and I have seen some new names in here in the uh, side uh, uh, comments, and uh, welcome in anybody who's new. Be sure to hit the like button, guys. Hit the subscribe button. We're talking about the current state of the Chicago outfit. 
which doesn't exist anymore. So how the hell do you talk about that? But we're, that's what we're doing. And uh, Red was a, a smut peddler, as um, Mr. John Drummond used to call him, John the Bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> a smut peddler. That's right. He pushed the smut. Now we have the internet. But before we had the internet, there was Red. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He had the bookstore that had the, the books with the plastic, with the, the little blackout stuff over them. Did you have the blackout stuff over the books, Red? Did they used to do that? Is that something that no, was... No, we, no, we had them on display and racks and everything. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was... And behind... In the glass behind the counter, we had uh, VHS tapes that were mm -hmm. for sale. VHS? And, um, Did you sell the Betamax porn too? No, never. Never. Talk about the big laser discs. No. No, that we was the first... Little boxes of eight millimeters. Little boxes of eight millimeters that were 15 minutes to... Uh, Linda Lovelace, Deep, Deep Throat, uh, things like that, you know, behind the green door. Classics. A lot of classics went through there, and a lot of dogs went through there, too. Behind the green door? What's that? Oh, it was a very famous one. I, I forget what year it was in the 60s um, huh? or early 70s, whatever it was, but it was uh, uh, Marilyn Chambers. Marilyn Chambers started. I have heard that name. And it was, and Debbie Does Dallas, that was a big one. Yeah. A lot of that, a lot of that stuff Dallas, just right? old. I mean, I'd buy that stuff 100 deep, meaning 100, 100 copies. I'd buy it 100 copies, it'd be gone in a month. Yeah. All right, back to the Chicago outfit. Enough of this porn business, Red. Everybody knows you're a smut peddler. <laughs> You had to bring it up. <laughs> we, well, I want the new viewers to know who you are, and I, I don't want the, the 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 regulars to forget. You know, God forget 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 that Red used to be a porn peddler. You know, I used to think you don't want me to forget. <laughs> I keep reminding you. I keep reminding you. Chain Weaver is Joe Collada going to grace us with a story on the air? You bet your ass. Oh yeah. Joe, we've been putting a whole list of stories together for the next interview, yeah. And we're going to put some shorts together So, um, uh, of Joe, if you haven't caught those yet. We put up one that's so funny about that uh, Tony, uh, uh, what was his last name? Gok? Yeah, Gok. Gak. Gak. Tony Gak. Oh, my God. You guys got to listen to that story, Joe tells. He's he, Cuts off his tie, dude. You got to hear this. It's hilarious. <laughs> Barber shop stories. Can I borrow your scissors? <laughs> oh my God. No, how do you, you, because no, that's how these guys were, though, you know? And it's, oh, it's so just, it's just the story. There was are, a lot of humor. There was a lot of humor back then. Oh, uh, Justin, Justin Lopeman Dobson. Justin Lopeman Dobson. Did I get that right? I think I did. I'm new, loving it. Hey, man, welcome in, dude. There's, it's a lot of fun hanging out with Red. I'm telling you, if you're new here, this guy's a trip. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Boom. Shit will go over his head. It's so much fun. Oh, it's so much fun getting to sit here. And, How you doing, Justin? It's, it's wonderful. Oh. This is Lopeman, Lopeman Do Dobson. Okay. Tim Hunt. You think the Chicago outfit doesn't exist anymore? You forgot about me. <laughs> Tim. Tim. Where's oh. your crew, Tim? <laughs> Sorry, Dave. I'm just a mad gangster from Chicago a long time ago. And when you get mad at people because it's all good, buddy, I'm there with you, buddy. When you get mad at people, it's all good, buddy. I'm there with you, buddy. Hey, Tim. Maybe I don't know. Maybe he, he do you know what Tim? Maybe he owns an asphalt company and he gets contracts from the mayor of such and such township. I'm not gonna say one, but let's just say like like where Victory Auto Records is, okay? Huh. And 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 the mayor gives him the contract to do all the asphalt, and then at the maybe at the end of the year, he buys the mayor a boat for Christmas. Because that, that's possible. It's the way I'm just theoretically I'm coming up with something that could be going on, right? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. 
Now, Joey the Clown Lombardo. He spent the last 15, about 15 years of his life in Florence, Colorado, locked up with El Chapo and uh, Ted Kaczynski. And who else is over there in that place? A lot of, a lot lot of, of bad people. Bad people, man. I mean, they don't they don't build a, a a supermax prison. I watched a documentary on that. The last thing you see walking in there is the beautiful Rocky Mountains. This beautiful landscape, <laughs> and there's this concrete mm-hmm. fucking hell hole, and you walk into it and you never see the light of day again. No windows, no nothing. No, they put you in a seven foot by twelve foot cell with a concrete slab and a Bible. And they go, sit here. That's it. That's it. One one hour a day, you get to run around in a big room. That's it. No, re- no reading material? The Bible. They give you a Bible. Yeah, but other than that, you can't get books, magazines, newspapers, nothing. No TV. Nothing. No TV. I don't, I couldn't trade. I wouldn't trade anything for, I wouldn't do it. There's no. For your freedom, for life? No that I, i'm not no it's not justin loperman dobson red reminds me of my grandpa <laughs> look at that hey Thank justin. You, justin you can tune in after this show after this show my show is going to be on so yeah, we, we do we jump on red's channel and we do a yeah. show on red's channel you want to hang out with us over there you can um <laughs> we have a lot of fun uh, uh that's a compliment buddy <laughs> it is no it is Luminous grin. He likes this. I can't wait to see you, man. On Friday, we're doing the crime tour together. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. Um, okay, Michael Graham behind Adam behind the green door was a yes. movie nearly as famous as Deep Throat that ran in real movie theaters and starred the porn actress Marilyn Chambers. Marilyn Chambers, the Downey Snowbox, who was on the Downey Snowbox as a baby. Are you serious? She was on the Downey Snowbox. Are you? kidding me no he's he's accurate the downy snowbox becomes a super porn star well everybody's got to start somewhere (laughs) i don't even know what the hell yeah everybody's got to start somewhere kissy cat adam how's the mob it's good it's it's doing really well i just took i actually did two of them yesterday i took two two different groups i had a bachelor party yesterday talk about fun i got to tell the Virginia Hill blowjob story during the tour, which normally I don't get to tell because, uh, um, you know, because you got to clean it up and make sure that the thing's family. But you got a group of bachelors in there, man. We got, we got, we didn't have to bleep anything. It was nice. It was nice. I like doing the tour when I get a group of fun people that are just, they were, they were awesome. All right. Um, You like tourists and you're good at them, Adam. Your tour is the finest tour I've ever been on. And I've been on a lot of tours. Hey, hey, I took Red on a virtual crime tour last night Mm -hmm. and and basically showed him the whole video and what was on and how I try to emotionally hook the the audience. Because that's what it takes. That's what makes it good. You have to have an emotional hook. And uh, what do you think? This crime tour is going to be something else. (laughs) It's great, huh? It it gives me the chills when I do it. It's like, it's it's very, it's... mm. Just wait, Luminous. You're in for a great one. Okay, guys, let's get back to this. Um, Bobby Gonzen. Nice. Uh, hey, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, dude. Uh, my dad used to fence food stamps. He would buy $100 worth of stamps for 60 or 70 bucks. His hangout was Madison on Ashland Avenue in Chicago. Wow. Wow. Fencing food stamps. Hey, remember they used to, what did they do outside the stadium? Scalp tickets. Scalping tickets, dude. You Every don't even do more scalping tickets. You can't scalp Every tickets. Stadium. You can't do that anymore. Everything's digital. Everything's digital. Where's your ticket? Here it is. No more scalping tickets. Oh boy, what a racket back in the day, huh? <laughs> Justin had, had a comment there that I liked. <laughs> Uh, Justin Lopeman Dobson planning a cross country trip from Washington to the East next year. Your tour will be a stop for sure. I hope that it is. I really do. It'll be so. Don't forget, order it through my vlog. Get a twenty percent discount, Justin. 
That's right, man. Put in Mob Blog when you buy the tickets. Don't go buying it through Viator or Vegas.com or one of those brokers. They're they're worse than the mob. They take 30%. <laughs> no, they want 30% of the ticket. It's like, wait, 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 wait. All you're doing is selling my ticket and you want 30%? Are you out of your mind? So I'd rather pass the savings on to the viewers, give them 20% off. I make an extra 10% instead of the broker getting it. And they save 20 and it's just, it's just a win-win. So... I actually should give it 15% to make it just an even split, but I'm a very generous individual. And that's why we give it. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Bobby Gonza food stamps used to come in little booklets. Remember that? They were actual stamps that they tore out. They tore them out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I was telling somebody somebody about SNH green stamps the other day and they said, what are they? (laughs) A Rolo Clevage. Uh, you ever discussed the book City in Chaos? Maybe City in Chaos is what he's City in no. Chaos. No, no, never, we never have. have. Uh, welcome though, Rolo. Never said your name before. Um, and welcome into the show. The and- only Rolo I've ever heard of, other than Rolo Tomasi <laughs> from yeah. LA Confidential. Dan Smith, I hope you're doing well. Dan Smith used to work with my dad on the Calumet City Fire Department. I'm pretty sure that's Dan. Um, it's got to be. <laughs> I remember Dan as a kid. I used to go to the fire station to go see my dad. And uh, and I used to get to talk to all the, the firemen there. And I remember him. He was a nice guy. Um, probably still is a nice guy. <laughs> uh, when you win tickets on the radio, it goes to your phone. You can't sell them. Kissy cat. Yeah. They've legalized that racket. They have. It's it's just crazy how much the government took from the mob. And now you go, oh, the mob doesn't exist. No, the mob's the government. That's what happened. This is just what happened. In, in <laughs> uh, yes, it is. Your dad was the best cook. Yeah, my dad was the best cook. Right? I ever tell you about my dad's cooking? Yes. Firemen usually are because they have to make up a, a big batch for everybody. <laughs> his, his mom owned a restaurant on the east side of Chicago. Sophie's kitchen, Sophie's restaurant. And uh, he grew up peeling potatoes in the kitchen and then became uh, on the fire department, had to cook for the crew and he cooked for us at home. And my mom said that she would do the fireman's ball they would have at the American Legion. I remember one year the movie Backdraft was coming out and that was the theme of the fireman's ball was Backdraft because it was a Chicago fire department movie. And uh, uh, that was a good movie, by the way. And uh, Russell, two guys, there were two brothers. Wait, wait, do you remember Donald Sutherland with the little doll? Oh, I like to burn a big ball. He played such a, <laughs> such a great, he was so believable, man. He was such a twisted character. Oh, I like to burn them on. And then he, uh, he, he went up for parole. He went up for parole. De Niro was the inspector in that, remember? And he was the one who went in and took yes. the doll. He was like, Tell us about this. And when he was, yeah, oh man, what a great movie. Anyway. Um, my dad, uh, the, the fireman's ball, they would, uh, uh, say to my mom, the wives of these firemen would say to my mom, your husband, yeah, your husband, yeah. Cause my husband's coming home going, John does it this way. John does it that way. John cooks it like this. John seasons it like that, you know, and they hated it because, cause the firemen would go to work going, Oh, I get to eat some good food. Cause my dad was cooking. Yeah. He'd send them to the store. Go get me this and this and this. And they'd go to the ambulance and they'd go to the store, Sturks, right? And they'd come back and he'd say, no, no, I told you this kind. I told you sliced, not chunky, sliced. Go back, get the right one. <laughs> crazy. Fire but there. Yeah, anyway. All right. So let's, God forbid you. Your dad, you dad would go Dominic. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Dan, you're on the same page, man. We're talking the same language right now. <laughs> Thanks for taking me back to that, dude. Your dad, I appreciate- your dad knew a different outfit that existed also. I mean, he, he knew so he, he knew what was going on in those days in Chicago Heights and that area. Yeah. But I'm sure he knew what was going on. Everybody was aware of it. And it's not there anymore. Not like it was. If it is, it's in legitimate businesses. I mean, some people, I believe that uh, Sally De Laurentiis uh, just went and bought his carpet cleaning business and went into legitimate businesses. Yeah. Justin, 
listen to us on one set or turn one of them down. Because if you have the delay and you're hearing an echo, that that gets annoying, man. <laughs> I know I've done it myself because I want to I want to type on a device and I put the, the thing on the TV that I'm watching and then I participate in the show by typing. And um, yeah. So uh, Joe Collada, Frank Collada's brother, for those of you that don't know, um, he used to cut Dominic Cortina's hair from 75 to 79. Joe, we were just telling the story about the Tony Gack and the Tiger. We put up a short. The two shorts right now have gotten almost 70,000 views. I looked last night. So go check those shorts out. They're hilarious. Um, Joe has some terrific stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so Robert Balk wants to talk about the Chicago outfit because that's what we're on here to talk about in the current state of it. I'm not sure. Solly is asking proposals you can't refuse. I'm sure you're talking about Solly D. And somebody right. else it earlier in the comments. I had to go past because we're we got on a tangent about something, but. Um, yeah, yeah, somebody said he had a carpet cleaning business or something in the comments. Guys, there isn't anything anymore. <laughs> there is isn't. They're all, legitimate. They're all legitimate businesses. There's nothing to take anymore. What it is. Hey, no friggin' way. Mr. Hoffman FD, Bob Ors. I knew Bob Ors. Mr. Ors, when I was a kid, said we took a few classes together. Cal City Farben. Bob, yeah, Mr. Ors. I remember him. I don't remember what he looks like, though, but I remember Mr. Orr's. So, yeah, wow. Uh, there used to be an Army Surplus store called Starks. It was on North Harlem Avenue in Norwich and one on 63rd in Harlem. I you went know? there. You I did? went there to Starks, yeah. Wow. Starks. Army Sur there was an Army Surplus store in Hammond, Indiana. We used to go there when we were kids, and we'd get all the, you know, different... We used to play army. I don't. I don't think there are anymore. They're gone. I don't see them anymore. I don't think. I don't think they exist. Do they? Yeah. I don't know. That's chill. You went to the one in Hammond. They had a great. It was right there on um, uh, River Oaks Drive, which turns into. Uh, it turns into 169th, I think. In in, in once you cross state line, but yeah, it was 159th, maybe. Anyway, yeah. Uh, it's crazy. Look, guys, there isn't an outfit anymore. There really isn't. Oh, Gomf. There are. There's 50 crew bosses in Chicago. They're the aldermen. Now That's we're talking. 165th. Thanks, Dan Zorzi. By the way, hit the like button. Dan's a cop. I can tell already just by the just by his body. A lot of cops like to watch the show. So if you're a cop, um, you know. So join in in the comments. I mean, let's have fun. You guys got the best sense of humor. It's so dark. I ever tell you I was picking up the first dead body I picked up, Red? No. No, I didn't, never told you that? Okay, so I no. worked on Esda. They called us fake bacon. All right, we drove around in squad cars, but we didn't have guns. Fake bacon. We helped out the police. We did shit they didn't want to do. That's what it was. <laughs> right? We picked up the prisoner meals Give over at the at kids. <laughs> Took the hamburgers to the police station for them, picked up dead bodies, took them down to the morgue. Oh, shit, they didn't want to do. Direct traffic. Hey, go that way. This, this shit's closed. Go that way. Yeah. Hey, you, go that way. Stupid. You know how many car accidents happen? Hold on. Do you know how many car accidents happen while you're directing traffic at a car accident? You'd be surprised how many people driving by rubbernecking, man, boom, and hit the car in front of them. Because <laughs> they're looking at an accident and they have one. Ask a cop. It's a true story. <laughs> so it is. Um, cops don't just watch the show, Adam. We participate. You're damn right you guys do. <laughs> it's true. Um, God cops, bless you. <laughs> and, I'm sure, and I'm sure that some criminals do too. You know what I mean? We got to have both sides on here. It's it's just what it is. Be, it's got to be. They aren't going to say they are because, you know, they're criminal. Fake bacon. Adam was a sizzling. The sizzling. That's funny, Robert. A sizzling. Anyway, the first body I picked up, it was a hooker. She was, uh, she was run over by a car behind Boss's Bar in Calumet City. 
Mm-hmm. And um, she'd been beaten, thrown out of the car, and then run over. And um, she was, there was this big, across her, her chest, like purple mark from where the car had, you know, and, and her head, too. That's what killed her, I think. Although, <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. I didn't do an autopsy. I don't know, but I'm guessing that that's what did it. Okay, because what the hell else would have done that? What else would have killed her? Um. Anyway, her teeth her teeth had been um, it broke her mouth when it ran over, and the teeth were laying on the ground next to her. And so I can't remember who was with me. He wasn't a big guy though. He, he was he was smaller than me but then, then again everybody's smaller than me right <laughs> Fuck, man i don't even have to say that i'm a fucking giant walking around so i go to take the head end because that's the heavier part of the body is the upper part the legs are going to be lighter so i'll i'll take the brunt of this we laid the bag out next to her and where i'm gonna go lean down and pick. this is my first doa i put my glove gloves on all this and the police are standing there. Mitch was one of them. I'm not going to say his last name. He's alive, but he was standing there. He was one of them. Mitch and Steve was another one. And they, uh, they're looking. They said, "Hey, uh, the teeth have to go with the body." And and I'm like, uh, uh, okay. So I I leaned. I took the tooth and I and I put it back in the mouth. What else are you going to do? It's got to go with the body. Bag it. Bag it. <laughs> So I put the, a couple of teeth back in her mouth, you know, that are laying there. It was kind of fucked up, man. I mean, I'll be honest, okay? So now I lean down to pick it up and move it over. And I don't know where to grab her, you know? And I'm like, do I grab under her arms? Do I? So I hesitated. A couple of, I'm like looking, hesitating. And the one copper looks at me and he goes, Adam, what are you afraid of? She ain't going to bite you. She didn't have any teeth. <laughs> that's the kind of sense of humor okay you know what they did once to the guy they put the, the uh, a walkie in the bag in the bag with the corpse and they followed him up the dan ryan expressway you know they stayed back a ways from the from the the meat wagon two guys in the meat wagon they turn on the walkie hey let us out let me out let me out of here and start screaming the fucking walkie in the back these two pulled over and jumped out of the meat wagon, okay? Because <laughs> the body started going, let me out of here. I'm not dead. You imagine doing that to somebody? How no. stupid is that? That's See, this is what I'm talking about. When I say... You, you have to, if you're a police officer, you have to have a sense of humor. You have Because if to. you don't have a sense of humor, you'll never make it through the, the shift. No. No, you have to. Okay. Bobby Bag of Donuts is, yeah, that's one I don't like, Bobby. <laughs> All right, Robert Balk, here's one that's uh, red starred. Red and I star comments as we're telling stories because we go back and forth and we got to know what to talk about next. I knew a policeman that found a dead body in Rogers Parks, Roger Parks. He didn't want to do paperwork, so they moved the body to Evanston. See, this is what I'm talking about, man. That yeah, happened a lot. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, my gosh. I mean, co- Big Mike was from someone passing me at a traffic stop. Yeah, see? Because they're looking. Every looking. Rubbernecking. It's bad. Oh. Okay, Scott. What does a dead person smell like? It depends on how long they've been dead. It's true. You can still smell it death in, in an hour. In an hour, you can still smell it. After an hour? Oh yeah, I can. No, I don't. I don't want to think about the last. Uh, let me think about something else here. Um, that's a bad memory. Um, gosh, I, I, I. Uh, the worst that my father ever told me that he had smelled was in Calumet City. They were on a a, a call from a smell from a neighbor's garage. What had happened is the guy hung himself in the garage. A few days, sorry, a few days, a few weeks, a few weeks earlier. <laughs> Middle of summer, July, August. It's humid. It's hot in Chicago. And this guy's right. 
garage. Hanging in the garage. My dad said they went up to the garage window. Got the little diamond window in the door in Chicago. Remember the little thing? Went up there to look through that. And he couldn't see in. Said the hell. And then he stood back from the window and he looked at it more. And the window like had movement. The window was covered with flies. So many that he couldn't see in. They opened the door. The stench, he said, was horrific. And the other one was a, a guy that was a, they went into the apartment building and there was a 250 pound black man laying on the couch. Oh, big, all oh, big, big 250 pound black guy. They're going through all of his stuff looking for his ID. Who is this guy? And all they're finding is this white guy that weighs 150 pounds. Okay. In the ID. But there's this 250 pound black guy laying on the couch. Bloated. For two weeks, so bloated, discolored. And when they went to pick him up off the couch, as they picked him, no, as they picked him up, it all split open and fell out onto the floor. My dad said they had to cut the carpeting around them, roll up the carpeting, and that's how they took him out. I mean, that's just, woo. And that stunk, he said. That was terrible. All right, let's get back to the mob, guys. Um, Adam, if you're still interested in Gus Alex, let me know. What about Carl DeLuna? Barnyard. Hey, it's Barnyard. I like Barnyard's got a twang to his voice when he talks. <laughs> and he did time with John Gotti. I've talked to, to Barnyard. He's the nicest guy in the world. I'm not making fun of your twang. I, <laughs> I hope you know that, Barnyard. New York it's, accent. It's not New York. It's a southern accent. Oh, but he, he has a southern accent. Yeah, he, he was all around. He came up to Chicago, though. He played pool. He was a pool hustler. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um, Kissy Cat, you're scaring me now. <laughs> the chalk lines go out of style. Yeah, they used to draw the chalk line around the body. Richard Kane. The chalk yeah. line that went around Richard Kane. <laughs> oh my gosh! Joey Lombardo wrote wrote on there with chalk. He said, "Here lies the ghost of Richard Kane. Don't anybody step on it." <laughs> <laughs> Barnyard, I'm a stone hillbilly. See, he even admits it. <laughs> Can you use God that word? You, where you live? Can you call people hillbillies, or they get mad, Brad? In Florida, uh, they get mad. They get mad. They, get they like mad. to be called rednecks. They like to be called. Oh, rednecks. they're rather rednecks. Okay. There's a big difference. Well, hillbillies, in their opinion, is trailer trash. Sure. Although they might live in trailers, you know. <laughs> but hillbillies like the bottom of the, you know. Mm. Today's mob is involved in things like the Chicago hired truck scandal. Google it. The Chicago is it hired still going truck. on? Well, government, man, it's all in the government. It's all what it went to be. You know, it, it just is. RJ420, he's a black stoner. Okay. You're a black stoner. As opposed to... <laughs> a white stoner? I don't know. It's a the opposite of black. Stoner, so. A stoner, a, a, a gray stoner, I don't know. But he's a black stoner. Um, Tony Johnson says, uh, oh, don't do yeah. lines. Lines. It contaminates the scene. Does it really? I mean, it makes sense that it would, right? What the hell? Oh, my gosh. Hey, Red, it's been a blast. Everybody, it's been fun today. Red, we'll be over on your show in a little bit. Um, guys, enjoy. Really enjoy. Life is short. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. You just aren't. So no. enjoy it. Have a good time. I mean, really. Thank you all for stopping by. And God bless. And uh, hey, you're out in Vegas. Do the mob tour. It's up and running. Join us for the Vegas mob tour. Experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie Casino. And 
other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never-before-seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall Gang. This is how serious we thought he saw. Sounds like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the dry one. Here's an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to the Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course dinner at the Tuscany Gardens, and then VIP seating for the long-running hit the Rat Pack is back show. Experience Vegas. The way it was meant to be.